Morning, it's Saturday the 11th of April 2015. Uh, if you're watching the live show, I think we had the wrong date up there. It said March. I'm still running about a month behind. Do you get that at the beginning of the year um, with your checkbooks? And Anyone still write checks at all? I've still got a checkbook. It rarely comes out now, admittedly. But um, I do find for sometimes as much as three months or so that I'm still putting the year before. Do you find that, ladies? Eh? Well, I've got something for you ladies to join in about this morning. Yes, get ready for that, gang, on this rather cold Saturday morning. <sighs> I've actually changed... <laughs> I've changed my top three times this morning. First of all, I had this hooded green top on. Have I got it in here? I mean, but but really, it shouldn't. It should only be allowed to be used, I think, in future in the house when I'm on my own, because it really is looking the worst for wear. I mean, I've got various stains on it now that won't come out. You know what I mean? And and sometimes I wear it out and you might have it under a coat. And I thought no one will notice, you know, if you've got it under a coat. But then you sort of warm up a bit and you open the coat and you forget, don't you? And then people point out, what's that stain on the front of there, Chris? You know, it might be a bit of tomato sauce or, or gravy or perhaps a, a bit of one of my veggie burgers has sort of dribbled down the front. Or it might be a bit of breakfast. You know, depending what day of the week it is. Because I only do the washing, you know, may, once a week maximum. Sometimes once every two weeks. We don't do washing every single day. My best mate, Ron, puts the washing... He must have the washing machine on three times a day. And if he puts, like, a white sheet on, he'll get it out, inspect it. And if there's a tiny mark on it, it goes through again on a boil wash. I mean, it's a, what's that, is it OCD? What's that called? OCD? Something like that, is it? So anyway, so I had that green one on first, and I thought I'd change that. I then changed that to my furry... Um, Armani one, which I bought in Florida the January before last. A huge discount. There's no way I would buy for myself such an expensive item at the full price. I really wouldn't. And I was wearing it, and I had that on, and I thought, oh, I, do you know, that doesn't look right for this, for this international television presentation. So then I've changed back into this uh, nice little pink shirt that I've got, which is quite nice. means nothing to you, of course, if you just listen to the show, if you're on the podcast. But for viewers, I like to try, I, you know, at, at, at my advancing years, I, it's more difficult to try and look one's best, isn't it? But I have done so for you, just for you this morning, boys and girls. I've got this pink shirt on. The reason I didn't put the pink shirt on in the first place is because it's so bloody cold outside. And I tried, believe me, I tried. I turned the heating off on Tuesday last week. It off. And it hasn't been on since. But I'm sorry, this morning, I'm, I've just had to put it on now about 10 minutes ago. It's so cold today and compared to yesterday. My little fingers are freezing cold. Freezing cold. Talking of fingers, um, one of our regular viewers and correspondents, uh, young Alfie, who's down there in Folkestone, recently burnt the ends of his fingers. I mean, did you did you burn the um, what's that thing called? Uh, did you burn your fingerprints off? Because if so, Alfie, you could go robbing now, couldn't you? You can go robbing from various stores now, and you won't leave fingerprints. He did it trying to trying to help someone. No fingertips for Alfie anymore. Gosh, what does that mean? Does it mean you can't enter other countries? I wonder. Anyway, uh, good morning to some people who are already with us this morning. Uh, Millie in Minnesota is there. Morning, Millie. We've got Anne. We've got Shania, who's been working very hard. Shania was up at one o'clock yesterday morning. Or no, this morning, still doing schoolwork. Oh, you can't do that, Shania. It's too early, too late at night. You, you can't go on all night and just work all the time. I saw an article somewhere in one of the um, newspapers, I think it was, and that is the longer people do their homework, the, the more pe homework school schools give pupils their uh, to do at home, the less good at it they become. I saw that written somewhere. Now, I went to a school, a very good school in London called the London Oratory School. 
And we used to have a ton of homework, Shania. I mean, a ton of homework. And I think they would say to us, you know, you need to spend sort of half hour, 45 minutes on each subject when you got home. We had so much homework. We had a homework diary of stuff that has to be done at home. And do you know what, Shania? Not a lot of people. Come closer. Come closer, closer. Not a lot of people know this. But my mum used to do all my homework. That is absolutely true. I'm not lying to you. I... <laughs> I used to get in, have my dinner, all done by mum, of course, and then I'd be out the door uh, with my uh, friends uh, of Steve or Peter and Alan, who are our other friends, and we'd go out on our bikes. And when I came back at sort of eight o'clock at night, seven or eight o'clock at night, we lived in Roehampton, um, there'd be all the homework would be there and it's done. It would be done. Right? And all I had to do was copy out the homework that my mum had done. And I would complain. I would complain to her that I had to sit there and copy it all out. <laughs> Doesn't your mum or dad do your homework for you, Shania? Get them to do it, girl. And then when they say they don't, they all oh, know you should do it yourself. You can put on those puppy dog eyes and say, oh, you would, mum. If you really loved me, you would do that for me. Like that, you can do that one. That works quite well. <laughs> Morning, Shania. And I believe Shania has uh, done very well because she wants to go to university. Now, there's a thing I never did. Never went to university. Um, I, I, I couldn't honestly think of anything more boring than going to a university. Now, where I work, if we have a group of younger people come in, generally I'll say to them, are you all at uni? And they all nod their heads like that. And uh, to sit there in, in a lecture room with some poor old soul standing at the... Um, uh, standing at the end of a lecture hall. And all these people in the hall on various levels just staring at him. And he must rav it on and on for hours. Oh, my God, how boring must that be? And the seats aren't even comfortable, are they? Are they wooden seats, Shania? Are they wooden sheets in univers seats in university? Uh, you'll have to take cushions in for your bum, darling, because it'll go to sleep. Awful. Sitting there for Hours and hours on end listening to someone rabbit on about nothing interesting whatsoever. It's a bit like people watching this show. You must be so bored sometimes when I'm chatting away here. You really must. People are dropping off left, right and centre. This show is a good thing. If you ever got some, if you have an insomnia, put this show on and it will help you to sleep. I know that for a fact. I really do. Um, so good morning, Shania. Which university did you choose? Anyway, you must let us know. Must say hello to some other people with us this morning. Jason Allen is with us today. Now, Jason, I believe, has got a brand new job, haven't you? Congratulations to Jason. Remind me what it is, Jason. Morning, Jason. Uh, good morning to Kieran. Morning, sir. We're all here today. Look, Wendy Young is with us. Have you got a new clock? I'm so glad you noticed. Yes, there is a new clock on my wall in front of me and it's something I've wanted for a long uh, behind me something I've wanted for a long time it is a flip over clock right so we have the normal analog clock those of you without vision we've got a little analog clock in the uh, in the corner which tells the time but we've got days and dates and a year and the day and date are those flip over things so now and again twice once once uh once a day, for example, you hear a bzzz and it goes click and the date flips over. I've always wanted one of those. And I mentioned it to best friend Ron and he just went out and bought one. How kind is that? Isn't that nice? And I think it's come from Habitat. So I'm very, very pleased with my new clock, which you've sp and I'm even more pleased, Wendy, Wendy, that you've spotted it. The only thing is... It has, of course, replaced the cuckoo clock, 
which is now downstairs. Now, the reason I moved the cuckoo clock, because I was listening back to one of the shows, and it is quite a loud tick on the cuckoo clock. Tick tock, tick tock. And I was wondering if people, maybe not so much people that watch the show, but people that were listening to the show, does it kind of put you off having that tick tock, tick tock, tick all the time? Whereas this one, you can't hear it ticking. I don't know if it's ticking or talking or doing both, but you can't hear it. So I'm so pleased that you noticed that. Well done, Wendy. Um, good morning to uh, Anne who's with us this morning. Paul Edwards as well. My God, everyone's here today, aren't they? I hope you're going to all be here Wednesday night. We've got a live show on Wednesday night, by the way. 11 p.m. UK time, Wednesday night. And that's a two-hour one. We d I do like the late night chats. I love doing the late night chats. And that's this Wednesday, OK? Wednesday night, 11 till um, uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, till 1, well, 2 o'clock if you want. Can you talk that long? Can I talk that long? I doubt it. But we do a, do a two-hour show this coming Wednesday between 11 and 1. Now, that's not quite a regular thing yet. Um, because I've got this, another quiz night now on Wednesdays. Um, but it's not every week yet, but I think it might become every week. Um, and I did my first one there on Wednesday and it did go very well once it got going. But I've got to tell you, um, when you. I, I, I know I'm not an actor or something like that, but when you do something for the first time, a new job, I do get incredibly nervous now you perhaps as a customer somewhere are not supposed to see that i don't want you to see how nervous i am so i try and cover it up but i start making mistakes i do start making mistakes here and there and the mistake on uh, you, you can't think straight do you see what I mean? And the mistake Wednesday was I, I, I'd gone in there earlier than I need to be, as, as is usual with my, me, because I, I tend to turn up, you know, far too early for jobs. I, just, just how I am. I'm always terrified at being late. I've, I've told you this before. And that's for anything. Any jobs, um, uh, appointments, perhaps for doctors or hospitals or anything, anything like that, then... I'm there generally very early. And I got there and I set up and I, I, I know I had my, and I've got it here, funnily enough, my purple questions folder. Very, very important. Here's all my questions and everything's in there. And I remember looking, th oh, what's that? I've dropped something there, haven't I? I remember looking through it and then putting it down and then I went to give out all the answer sheets to everyone. Now, now this particular quiz is at the, t the King's Head Theatre Pub in Islington and I'm back there in two weeks, which is Wednesday the 22nd. OK, Wednesday the 22nd of April. I'm doing a quiz night at the King's Head, uh, King's Head Theatre Pub in Islington. It's a lovely place. Um, and... So I've given out all the all the um, the answer sheets and the pens, gone round, chatted with everyone, given it a little bit on the microphone. We got all that set up and that was working. And then I started looking around for my questions, my purple folder. Couldn't find it anywhere. And I've, I thought, well, someone's hidden that as a joke or has nicked it to try and look through the questions. But I generally put it somewhere where you can't find it or get it. You see what I mean? And I've now gone round all the tables and looking behind chairs and things to see if someone's in there. Because people do that sort of thing, especially students. University people like Shania will be soon like to pay little jokes on people. So I've gone to the assistant manager, Ashley. Now, she's a lovely girl. Such a nice little person, Ashley. And I've said, have you seen my purple folder? No, where did you leave it? I said, I'm sure I left it up there on the little... It's, it's a kind of little... I wouldn't say it's a stage. It's like a little raised... Yeah, no, it is. It's like a mini stage, and I put everything on there. So I couldn't find it there, and I've gone everywhere. And eventually, the, the manager, Tom, another nice chap, you're right. 
I said, no. I said, I've lost the question somewhere. I'm sure I had them here. He said, did you definitely have them with you? I said, yes, I looked through them. I always like to look through quickly, you know, a little, little scan before I start reading them out. And I said, oh, I said, I'm going to have to download another load. I said, you'll be all right for five or ten minutes. It's going to take a little bit longer to do this. He said, yeah, OK. He said, no problem. I said, what I'll do is I'll, I'll have to stand on the stage and read them direct from the computer. He said, well, we've got a printer upstairs. Just email them to me and I'll print them off. I said, well, that's a good idea. So I've downloaded another load of questions at enormous, enormous cost to me, dear. What, four pounds? And um, it is a lot. Of, four pounds is a lot of money, dear. That's that's why you've got no money. That's why you've got no money. Because you think, you know, four pounds is nothing. There's a lot of youngsters now. They think 20, 30, 40 quid is nothing. It's a lot of money. Put it away in the bank. Don't put it in fruit machines. Learn from me. So I've downloaded these questions, emailed them to him. And um, I thought, right, well, I'll, I'll have a couple of minutes. I'll have to say something. So I picked up the mic and I'm rabbiting on about something just to fill time. It's called padding, padding. Fill in a bit of time. And the manager disappeared to, to print them off for me. And then Ashley come up and said, what's that on top of the speaker? And right, literally, I'm standing there. The speaker is there on top of the speaker. Is my purple question folder. So I, oh, I felt so stupid. I really felt stupid. So there it was, right in front of me like that. And that's what nerves do. I haven't actually made a mistake, but my head wasn't there. You understand? And quite often something like that happens on a first night. It's the nerves. Fortunately, you know, as is very important, the customers don't see it and you just keep going. You, you, can I use the term bullshit? <laughs> you bullshit your way through it. <laughs> I've been doing that for years, years. <laughs> right, let's do some uh, messages. Jason has, oh, I thought you had a new job. Same job for the past six years. Oh, sorry, Jason. It must have been someone else then. I did notice that someone else had a, a, a new job or something like that. So thank you. Uh, Shania is going to Winchester. It's her top choice and Portsmouth is her second choice because Shania is very clever. She's been all, offered all sorts of university places. I'm sure that if I ever tried to go to university, they'd offer me a job at the local primary school to go back there and learn what I didn't learn when I was at school, Shania. I'm not very intelligent. I'm really not. Thank you, darling. Uh, good morning to Anne who said, I loved your very warm tribute to Barry Manilow in yesterday's video, Chris. Yes, he's been the most amazing entertainer for so many years of our lives. He truly seems to get to the point of living a full and colourful life and has enhanced our lives with the most beautiful songs, music and musicals. I did have an inkling he might be gay, but yes, the twirls do give it away. He does some wonderful twirls on that stage. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful twirls. We do like a twirl, yes. Um, please make sure you give us a few twirls today. Well, if I stand up, the trouble is if I stand up, you see, oh, Christ, I'm not, not my teeth out on the microphone then. If I stand, you see, my head disappears. I mean, I, I, I can do it on the chair. Do you want me to twirl? Da, da, da. Hang on a oh, I knocked everything about it. There's not, not a lot of space in this studio. I don't want to knock out. Has anyone else noticed the flower behind me this morning? Look at that. My um, orchid has burst into flower. Now, that orchid is about just over a year old, and it's sat there. And You know, with orchids, I, I often think, uh, is it dead or not? <laughs> it's probably people listening or watching this show that are wondering if I'm dead. I may not actually be alive. I could be an animated robot. You don't know that. So thank you, Anne, for that. There's a little twirl for you. A bit difficult to do that in here, though, my darling. I, I'll have to uh, avoid the twirls, OK? I'll have to avoid the twirls. Uh, good morning to uh, Simon. Morning, Simon, who said, Shania wouldn't get as many A-star marks if I had done her homework. This is Shania's dad who's with us this morning. You're right. After watching you for years, she's used to being bored. How Shania is one person who's not bored. I'm telling you that now. I did say it was cold here. Apparently, Wendy, who's up north in um, Leyland, is it Leyland? Lancashire, Lancashire somewhere. Yes, uh, who says it's warm and sunny 
up where she is. We'll send some of it down. We've got sunshine, but not warmth at the moment. I'm rather disappointed to say. Very, very disappointed to say. Um, Alfie says the problem where he's got his fingers burnt, he said smoke started gathering in the electric meter board room. My spirit guide told me to go out to the front door, so I did. When I opened the door of smoke, a fire started from the attraction of oxygen to the smoke. Do be careful, Alfie. He's got his own website, alfiedivine.wix.com. You can have a little look at that if you want to, boys and girls, OK? Uh, good morning to Dino. Are you actually with us this morning, Dino? Uh, yes, I'll have to reply to that uh, privately to you later on. Leyland, I knew it was Leyland that you lived. Oh, actually, blimey, that was quick, Wendy. I don't think there's much of a delay this morning. I only mentioned that, like, three minutes ago. Right, now here's something to talk about. OK. Oh, there he is. Yes, Dino is with us this morning. First time listening. Is it really? Oh, you're with us live as well, Dino. How fantastic is that? How do you know if you're with us live, boys and girls? We'll have a look at your clock. If it's coming up to 23 minutes past 12 in the afternoon on Saturday, the uh, 11th of April 2015, you are indeed with us live. And you can join in live, boys and girls. Here comes information for you. You can call in on Skype. Now, my Skype username is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. Don't call in yet, because I'm going to give you something to call in about, OK? United Kingdom Talk is the Skype username. There is also a phone number, a local London phone number. This is not a premium rate number. It's a local London number. And that number is 020 3477 O two O eight one double four three four double seven. I'm just going to type Dino something. Um, is Lonnie Gordon there? Is Lonnie Gordon with you today? Superstar and great singer Lonnie Gordon. Do you know my? Fa if Lonnie is with us this morning and listening, my favourite song um, from you was not happening all over. It was one. Is it? If I have to stand alone, was it that one? Dun dun. dun, dun. Oh, just a minute. I'll have to look that up. I'm sure that's the... Is that the one, If I Have to Stand Alone? Yes, it is. That was my favourite song by you, Lonnie. I played that one to death. And I think it was at the same... Roughly the same time as a song, I don't know if you know it, by Nancy Davis, If You Belong to Me. Now, that one didn't get anywhere at all. But I love that I played those two songs to death. I absolutely did, my love. Yes, I did. Um... Now, let me just uh, type back to Dino. Hang on. There we go. Very, very important. Very important. Now, here's, here's something for you to call in about then. All right? No one... This was in um, this week's Daily Mail Online. A new survey... Of 1,403 women. Now, how do they get that figure? <laughs> Why don't they do, like, 1,000 or 2,000? Why, why is that? Anyway, a new survey of 1,403 women has revealed female shopping habits. Now, are you ready for this one, lady? Are you ready for this one, ladies? One in three will now search online for their shopping before they leave the house. And one in five will send a dressing room selfie to a friend for their opinion. You know, so you go into the shop, ladies. You try something on, perhaps in that little cubicle with the mirror, and you take a little photo of yourself. Don't you? Now, Anne would be good at this because she loves taking photos of herself. If you go on Anne's Facebook... You know, if, if, if I was to tell you Anne's Facebook, which I would need her permission first to do that, right? You will find hundreds and hundreds of selfies of her every day on her site. They're just hundreds and un her and her friend Sean. All they do all day long is they've got their little phone like that and they do another selfie and she's got this stick. I'm sorry I'm going to have to mention the stick again. She's got one of those awful selfie stick things. What's all that about? 
So you'd be good at that, Anne. You get in that little dressing room or changing room, trying your dresses and, and your tight-fitting jeans and shirts and things like that and trying stuff on like that. We're going to be talking to Millie in a second, OK, about this. But the story goes on. Can't understand why Lee moans while you're shopping. Well, according to a new infographic, women go through a staggering 10 steps before they make a purchase. And it goes through all the steps here. For one in seven, a close female relative's opinion is the main one that matters most. Now, Millie's on the line in Minnesota. Good morning, Minnie. Good morning, Chris. Did I say Millie? You? Millie, Millie, sorry, Millie. <laughs> How are you doing, Chris? I'm all right, Millie. No, I can't hear you there. There we are. Turn you up a bit. That's it. <laughs> what are you like shopping, Millie? Um, you know what? It depends. Yeah. Um, if it's something for me, I don't usually take very long because I have, you know, I have in mind what I, you know, what I want to get already. Do you but, do you do you take selfies of yourself when you when you're trying something on and sending it to someone for their approval? I would never ever ever do that ever. <laughs> um, but what takes longest for me is if I am gonna buy a gift for somebody. I tend to take longer doing that because I want to. I'm the type of person. But when I buy a gift for someone, I want to buy just the right thing for them. Right. You know, something that I know um, will fit their personality and something that I know that they'll enjoy. Like, like for example, um, do you remember the St. Christopher's menu, medal I got you? Yes, I do. Yes, I've got it. Yes. I took forever trying to, trying to choose that. Because it was for someone else. See, my sister does a lot of shopping. When she goes, sh I, I no longer go shopping with my sister. Right? Yeah, that's, yeah, but, I where, won't go with my mom. Well, I will, I refuse to go with my mother. I, well, I where, will not. Where my sister lives, uh, her main shopping centre is sort of um, Lincoln. Right, yeah. And there is a Debenhams there. If she goes in there, right, she will stop at virtually every hanging rail to grab something, pull it off the rail and look at it and touch it. Yep, and you, you can't get out of there. You can't get out because she's touching and looking at every single... So I, don't, I, don't, I refuse to go shopping with my sister now. We used to go every Boxing Day shopping. You know, yeah. if I was up there at Christmas, then we would go out shopping what, Boxing Day and then, and then she yeah. would go into Debenhams. Oh, it would be a blooming nightmare. Yeah. An absolute nightmare. Looking at bras and knickers and all this uninteresting stuff. I mean, if we was to go to the technology section, then I might be interested. I don't want to sit there looking at bras and knickers all day long, dear. Well, see, here's my here was my mother. If I ever had to go shopping with her, which I did quite a bit when I was, you know, younger in my teenage years. Mom would always tell me, oh, it's just going to take a few minutes. I swear. I promise. Oh, it's going to take a few minutes. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly it. That's what she says. Oh, I won't be long. And then she starts picking everything up. So yep. annoying. Yeah. So the last time my mom did that, I looked at my mother and I said, I am never, ever, ever going shopping with you ever again. Uh-uh. No. Sorry. Uh-uh. Not me. <laughs> now let's see what else it says in the story. Um, it found that style-conscious females utilise every available tool to seek out that dream dress or must-have item before canvassing the opinions of friends, close family and their other half. Um, one thing they do, they feel the fabric. Do you have a little bit of a touch, do you, um, uh, Millie? Well, do you have you a little feel? I, I don't really buy a whole lot of clothes uh, for myself only because um, see people in the you know in the clothing industry they don't often think about you know what is easy for somebody in a wheelchair to get into and out of and a lot of these clothes I in order for me to even wear them I have to buy them but then get them altered 
Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you look online no. first? It says, ladies, look online first and then go to the shop after. Um, you know what? I buy, I go a lot. I do a lot of my shopping online these days. And it's only because um, I'm, I find that when I go out these days, um, I run into a lot of uh, fans. Oh, no, not fans, oh. narrow-minded people. In other words, people that come up to me and go, oh, you poor little thing, you're in this chair. Oh, oh don't oh, they get God. on your bloody nerves? Yes. Oh, just treat you like a normal person. Well, you are a normal person. Just treat you like a person with workable legs, that's what I say. Do you? Yeah. I wish people, I wish more people were like you, Chris. Oh. I really do about? wish more people were like you. Well, I just think everyone should be treated the same. You know, it's like when I say, oh, yeah, we've got a black president. No, you haven't. You've got a president. Mm -hmm. We have a gay mayor. No, you haven't. You've got a mayor. Why do people have to keep pointing out the bloody differences all the time? I don't know. And I'll tell you what, I don't understand what the big fuss is about, about Barry Manilow marrying, marrying a man. I mean, good grief. I, I mean... First of all, so what? He's happy. I mean, well, if I'm jealous that I wasn't noticed. I was hoping that I might be noticed in the audience one day and asked onto the stage for a dance. How awesome would that be? There's an Ameri did you did you hear me then using an American term for you then, Millie? Awesome. Yes, you did. That's a Britney yes. Spears word. That is. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. But I, you know, I was I was so upset when the there was such a big deal made about the fact that he you know he married he married a male partner so what yeah first of all he's never said anything publicly about his sexual orientation and he shouldn't have to and he still if hasn't he, he still hasn't this is only hearsay yeah this, I know. this is all coming from everyone else I, so tell me oh, millie it? so you know when you go in to buy an item of clothing right are you in and out there in a few minutes, or could you be in there for an hour maybe to choose one item? In and out in a few minutes. Really? Only because I hate clothing shopping. Quick as that. Reason. Yeah, me too. For the third reason well, I mentioned. I say that, it depends. Now, when I was with my nephew in Florida, mm -hmm. um, January before last, we did three tropping. Sh uh, tropping. We <laughs> We did three shopping trips um, right. to designer outlets. Right. Now, generally, I won't pay the full price of a designer item. You're so tight, it's not even funny, Chris. Hey. I said, you're so tight, it's not even funny. <laughs> It's true. But so we went and when I go to those outlet places, I will spend quite a lot of time looking at everything. But then on the other hand, I rarely go. You know, I found one here in England um, in Oxford and we went there. And for that, I will spend an entire day going around all the shops, not just in one shop, all the shops, buying my bags of clothes. And then that's it for six months right you know so it's like a day out and i have to say um i think really my favorite shopping experiences for clothes will would be in those shopping outlet places so you go to these places like a little village you've got the ralph Lauren and the barber and and all those places like that and it's generally cheaper than going now for example i took my nephew to um uh, with my best mate to harrods this week for his 18th. Yeah, I saw the photos. Oh, I was jealous. Oh, it was fab for the, for his 18th birthday. And he chose a couple of bits in there. Um, but I, I saw a couple of bits that I would have liked, but I didn't buy because I knew they'd be full price. Right. And then, yeah. uh, for example, there was, there was a particular blue Ralph Lauren jacket that I really liked because I think I need to do something about my clothes now. I mean, let's be honest. I'm a bit old to be going around wearing hooded tops now, aren't I? No. Of course I am. 
I mean, it does, not. It doesn't look right sometimes. Anyway, so I saw this jacket and I thought, well, that's nice. And I looked at the price, a little bit dear. I've come back here, gone on the Ralph Lauren site, and it's like 50 quid cheaper. But I still won't buy it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're so tight, it's not even funny. So, so yeah, I, I, if, you know, I, I'll spend maybe a day, right, we're going to go shopping today, and then I'll go shopping that day, and that will be it literally for months. Months. Yep. Mm -hmm. I feel old. I feel, you talk about feeling old. I feel old now because I can't believe Jimmy's 18 now. 18 I years mean, old he is now, yeah. Yeah. When I first started listening to the show, he was what, nine? <laughs> yeah, I've got some old audio from him here. God. Shall I try and find this? Oh, um, no, you're going to embarrass the heck out of him. Oh, it's, dear. It, I was, let me see. Here it is. I've got it straight away. Right. So we had this. TV program. Oh, what was it called now? Oh, gosh. Um, do you know, I can't remember. David Walliams and Little Britain. That was it, Little oh, Britain. Right. Yep, Did you yep. see Little Britain? Yeah, we had, we had something. We had, um, it came over here briefly to the US. Right. Well, anyway, there was a... A great big woman on it called Bubbles Devere. Do you remember her? Bubbles yes. Devere. Yes. Right? And yes. she used to come out with the term, call me Bubbles, darling. Call me Bubbles. And she yes. was a bit of a con artist and right. pretended that she had loads of money. Right? And she uh -huh. said, call me Bubbles. Here's my nephew doing that when he was about nine. Oh, God. Let me just try and bring this up now. It might play. Did you hear that? No, let's. Oh God, he's gonna he's gonna wring your neck. Why is that? That's 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 looping. That is just a second. Let me try to play back. He's gonna wring your uh, neck. Well, it doesn't matter if it loops, does it? No, here it is. Are you ready for this, Millie? Yes. Yes. Call me bubbles, darling. Call me bubbles. <laughs> Did you hear that? Oh my gosh! If he hears you played that on today's show. He's going to hit you over the head with a book or something. Here it is again. Call me Bubbles, darling. Call me Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> but I can top that for embarrassing stories. I don't think I've ever told you this, though. Go on. Tell me the embarrassing story. Well, see, my dad was a headmaster. Uh, well, a principal that we, we would call it here, but headmaster that, that you would call it over there. And he and my mom worked in the same middle, middle school building, and I went there at the same time. And I had sat down with them, and I said, look, don't, you know, don't recognize me as your daughter when I'm at school. I mean, when we're at home, it's no big deal. So they both said, no problem. And when people did, when students did well, dad would have this assembly thing to recognize them. Yes. And on this one particular occasion, I happened to have been one, one of the ones that did, you know, that had a really high uh, grade point average. And when my name was called, first of all, I forgot to grab my name certificate. So I had to back up and the table, the corner of the table got caught on my chair. So of course I'm carrying the damn thing and I'm going, oh God, okay. Floor open up and swallow me now. So I just quickly grab my certificate, go to the go to the vice principal. Everything's fine. Go to my dad, and mind you, this is in front of the entire school staff, students, everybody. He decides he's going to kiss me on the cheek in front of the whole school. What your dad? And, yes, my oh, dad. Oh, that's the dad. worst embarrassment ever. <laughs> yes. Yes. And my mom was there, and she saw what happened, and she was, oh, yes. God. Yes. It's like, you know, when we went to secondary school, and mum, uh, it was me and my friend Gary Manners, actually, and there was my mum and his mum, and we are desperately trying to convince them that we didn't actually need to be walked to the front door of the school. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I course. always I always embarrassed Jimmy when he was at school. I told him I was going to turn up at his school, you know, and, and, and get out of the school. He's like, Jimmy, Jimmy, it's Uncle Chris. I'm over here. I'm giving you a lift today. But I don't think, I think he might have walked the other way. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But anyway, everybody just kind of went, oh, and my face turned purple. And I They don't my- like to be embarrassed, do they? I tell you what, I was watching a film yesterday, Paddington Bear. Have you seen that film yet? Not yet, but I, I intend to. Very, very good film. You will love it. You will love it. And there's a little girl in that and her mother. And her mother finds out that she's seeing a young boy. They're both about 14 or something like that. And right. um, uh, her mother says, why don't you bring it round? I don't think so. I can't stand the embarrassment or something like that. And eventually, yeah. right near the end of the film, she does bring him round. And she says, right, and the boy's in the girl's room, right? The girl's left the room and gone to her mum's room and said, right, he's next door. There are some rules. Do not hug him. Do not start crying. (laughs) And all this. Mum says, no, no, okay, I'll do that. So she goes into the room and then does all those things. Oh, yeah, just like my dad. And, of course, everybody went, oh, and, of course, my face was red. Oh, Millie, lovely to talk to you today, my darling, all right? Okay. If you're around Wednesday night, we're here to two hours Wednesday, 11 till 1. Be nice yep, to have a I chat. Have... I don't know what we're going to talk about yet. Not sure yet. I'm not, not ready for that one yet. All right. I'll, I'll try and be there. What time is it there now, um, uh, Millie? It's about 6.42 in the morning here. In the morning. You're up nice and early, are you? Well done. Well, I had, well, I had, to, come, I had to come and tune into the show today, now didn't I? Yes, you did. I am- one of your most faithful viewers and listeners. Have a nice day, Millie. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Bye. Mwah. Cheerio, the lovely Millie in uh, Minnesota there. Got a couple of messages to do here. Uh, good morning, Mike, who's down there in Brighton, who says, uh, what's happened? Did you kill the cuckoo bird? No, the cuckoo bird's now downstairs. I was a little, a little bit concerned we might start getting complaints that the cuckoo had disappeared. He is in now indeed downstairs. And uh, the reason for that is the tick was very loud. The tick of the clock was extremely very loud. So um, that's the only reason that's not there now. And uh, Mike also says, I love the white flower at the back. Yes, it's interesting at the side panel of the YouTube. You can see it grow last year and how the petals increase in time. 10th, 17th and 31st of May last year. What type of plant is it? There's an orchid behind me there. It's a beautiful orchid. Uh, right, good morning. Who's calling in now? Hello. 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 Oh, have you got the YouTube playing still? Hang on a minute. You've got to pause that, OK? There you go. Oh, hang on. I know that voice. Yes, you oh. were just slating me for shopping. Oh, my God, it's my sister. Oh, I've, I've, all those years I've been doing this show and I've worried so much about this moment. And now I've got my grandchildren here to defend me now. Are you on Skype? I'm on Skype. Good God. How have you managed to work that, dear? This is my sister Sharon in Lincolnshire. How have you I'm managed to work that? I've it out myself. There you go. How have you managed to work it? Because I'm a genius, because I'm not stupid like you, because I used to do my own homework. Excuse me, how long did it take you to learn how to open an email? couple of weeks? No, a couple of hours. A couple of hours? I think a bit longer than that, dear. It was months you couldn't open emails. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, what you got to say? You were talking about me and Debenhams. Yes. And then you just said, you contradicted yourself and you said that you'd like to walk around the shops on news of Jimmy in America. It was a different thing altogether. We're not looking at bras and knickers, are we? Why is it all right for you to look at Pulling anything? it off the... Oh, look at that lovely bra. Oh, no, no, let's look at this one. Oh, no, let's look... Oh, no, let's go over there. Oh, you're a nightmare to go shopping with, sis. That's why we don't go anymore. Yeah, you should go shopping with the men of the house. Well, I did. Yeah, you've been shopping with Jimmy. Yeah, yes. Yeah, well, there's two others. You've got Gary and Martin. Oh, when do they ever go shopping? Gary's in and out of a shop in like second. Yep, I know what I want. In, out. And when does Martin go clothes shopping? When? when I've never ever seen him go clothes shopping, ever. True. I'll do it for him. We go together. We've got a little little message here from Anne who says, um, 
Uh, I hate ladies' clothes shopping with men, but they always want me to go clothes shopping with them. And then I turn in into the ultimate personal shopper. I ought to charge for my shopping wisdom. Here, you could become a personal shopper for me, Shao. Picking out yeah. bits and pieces. Yeah. Need would you to. like that? Yes, I would. And what do you? What about me hoodies? Do I need to cut? Stop wearing those now, sis. No. Because uh, Anne says, yes, I don't like those hoodies on you or that grey old Lonsdale top or the tracksuit bottoms on you. You are no, too... Look, yeah, look, 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 check this out. Are you ready for this, sis? This is oh. from regular correspondent Anne who says, you are too classy now, Chris, and must be dressed as a gentleman at all times. Don't think so. Nothing what do you mean, classy. I don't think so? No. No? Hey, Say hello to Chris. Hello, Chris. Hello, Evie. Oh, it's my great niece, Evie. Morning, Evie. Are you watching? You told me to pause it. Oh, yeah, of course. Pause it, yes. Yeah. I've actually what? shut it down. What are you doing today, then? Anything exciting? Going shopping. I'm going Debenhams. Oh, God. Well, good luck. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, then we'll let you get on with some other people. Say bye bye, Evie. Mm -hmm. A bit louder. Bye bye, Evie. Bye, Evie. Love you. Where's Harry? Bye. He's eating again. No, don't. No, wait. Oh. Cheerio, then. Bye. Bye. There we are. My sister calling. That was a first, wasn't it? When's the first time she ever called in? Anne goes on to say um, for the garden. Um, perhaps you could wear your old clothes like that. OK, well, thanks, Anne. I'll, I'll bear that in mind. I'll wear them in the garden. Um, I think you should get some nice navy blue or beige coloured chinos from somewhere like Gap. Oh, I tried to... The trouble is I've got a bit more... It's a bit, a bit around the waist again, Anne. I hate to say it, darling, but I'm back up to 12 and a half stone. I'm so disappointed with myself. I really am. And... I'm putting it mainly down to cheese and onion crisps. I've been hitting the cheese and onion crisps lately. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Anne. I know that I was like a, a beacon of weight loss in your in your life, but yes, I've put it back on again. Sorry. Hello to Kieran. Good morning, Kieran. Who says, have you put your bet on for the Grand National? No, nope, I haven't done that at all. No Grand National. Don't do, I don't know anything about horses. It would be very much a guessing thing, you see. And I mean, the only bet I've ever placed in my life was on the Eurovision Song Contest last year. And I won 400 and, uh, £450, didn't I? On the uh, Conchito Hurst or Worst for Rise Like a Phoenix. Millie said I should, could I sing for her? Rise Like a Phoenix. Out from the ashes seeking love and adventure. Retribution we all know. That's enough. Bit of song for um, Millie this morning. Simon says, I love the new clock and the flower, but why are you wearing a tea towel instead of a shirt? How dare you? This is an expensive shirt, I'll have you know. Expensive shirt. Thank you. Anyone else want to call in this morning? Oh, yeah, because we're only here for another 10 minutes. Phone number is 020-8177. Sorry, 020-8144-3477. OK, 020 3477 is the uh, uh, phone in number. And there's a Skype in as well. If you want to Skype in, the Skype username is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. Skype in United Kingdom Talk. Uh, Wendy says, just so you are aware, the United Kingdom Talk flag covers the end of your numbers. Oh, does it? Oh, where is that then? Do you know, I can't see that from here. So what can't you see? 477. Oh, I, could, I don't know how I would do that. OK. Um, which, is it, is it at that end? Maybe I can, let's try something. I like it to be correct for you. A minute. So if I move that along another three. Does that work, Wendy? I've kind of moved it along a bit. As, can you see everything now? Sorry. Those of you who are watching the live show gets a little thing at the bottom there to with the phone number and everything else in there, okay? 
Has that worked, Wendy? I'll kind of move it along a little bit for you. Please let me know. Uh, Paul Edwards loves the new clock. Would Ronnie get me one? Well, he doesn't know you, Paul. You know, it's not often. He does buy me little gifts now and again. It's nice, isn't it? I love this new clock. I love the flip over. You've got to be there at the right time. It actually happens because at the bottom it says Saturday p.m. now. It might be a little bit too small for you to see the p.m. bit at the bottom there. But um, uh, the it flips over just at 12 o'clock. I mean, what I could do is set it a little bit slow so that on the next live show, you could, you could next Saturday, you could actually see that flipping over. How exciting is that? Yes. Uh, oh, I see. Jason, is that any better now? I've moved it along a bit. I've tried to move it along a bit. Good morning. Who's calling in? That's a London number. Who's that? It's Ray. Hello. Good morning, Ray. How are you? You said you had ten minutes more off the call, so I thought I'm getting quick. I have indeed. Ray, what are you like with your shopping, mate? Oh, oh. well, I envy you because the last time I went to America it must be 20 years ago, so I remembered how cheap the Levi's were. Oh, that my was, God, everything is so cheap. It was there. wonderful, yeah. Oh, but, people can um, see the number now, so that's good. Yes, Thank it's you, it's Wendell. nice and clear. Yep, I was can see that. looking at your new setup and the new clock and... Um, Missing the cuckoo a bit, but yeah. Oh, the orchid, I can see it. I was upstairs listening to that bit upstairs when I was in the shower. And oh, I were you? you talking about the orchid. I've not seen that before. Beautiful. Are you just got out then, have you? What time do you No, no, out, no. I, actually, I'm just about to go out. I'm going down, driving down to Grace for a ukulele meeting. Oh, yes. So, Anne can say, oh, how boring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a, a ukulele Anne's meeting for the George Forby Society. Pardon? Anne's probably fallen asleep now that you've called <laughs> in. <laughs> but the reason I rang up... Uh, this is an old Mrs. Shufflewick joke, so I'll spoil it by telling you it's a bit of a joke. But this is only innuendo. Who's Mrs. Shufflewick? Mrs. Shufflewick was a drag artist at the Black Cap long before you worked there, who's now dead. His name was Rex Jameson. And every time the boat race was on, he would always, on the Sunday morning, he'd say this gag. And I was going to change the gag to suit you and your personality. Oh, and yeah. before I say it, it's innuendo. It's like Max Miller, there's another person who's before you were born, Max Miller, and Carry On Films, all about innuendo. Yes, that's so right. So this is yes. my innuendo joke for this morning. Yes. Hello, Chris. I thought you might be going down to see the boat race today because you might be asked to kiss the cocks of the winning team. <laughs> now, how about that? Is that a bit naughty for this time of the day? <laughs> it's only innuendo, isn't it? And it's men and women now. A cox could be a man or a woman. That's right, yes. Even it, even on the Mao boat race, they used to have a woman cox sometimes, got, so the joke didn't quite work. But I always thought... Is it today, the, um, the boat Pardon? race? Is it today, the boat race? It's today, and uh, yes, to bring your programme very topical, today is the na Grand National, which I've got no interest in gambling at all, the Grand yeah. National, and the other thing, it's the boat race, but the first time they're going to have ladies and the men... <laughs> Well, at the same no, time? Separately. Not oh. together. <laughs> that Who would goes be first? The butch women would win, I expect. Did, 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 I, I, I'm sure I heard on the, on the radio the other day that they're mm. going the other way. Is that right? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I meant the boats. I, I'm Were, not sure. No, going... I, know that it's, I did... know that because of the tides of the River Thames, yes. it's very much later than it used to be. I used to watch, when I was a kid, I watched the boat race three o'clock in the afternoon but i think the tides must suit uh the, the, the time and the time and the tide is most important so hence it's 10 to 5 the ladies race yeah and the men's race is 10 to 6 that's very very late bbc never used to be on we don't never give up their schedule to uh schedule or schedule schedule to um show the boat race live at that time of the evening yeah. but they are now Years ago, they wouldn't. Yeah. How are you? Well, I mean, but does does it go against the tide or towards the tide? Oh, I I, I couldn't tell you there. I I, oh. I always know that the end is Putney Bridge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And you go, you you you. This you never want to drive down there on on this particular day. I've never seen it live. No, never been no there. No drive. I, I tell you what I did for charity once. Oh, I was only about 20-something. I, I walked from Tower Bridge, across, zigzag fashion, across every bridge right down to uh, Kew. How long does that take? Uh, oh, about 
four hours, I think, four or five hours. It took, took it's about twenty six miles. It, I did it for a sort of homeless charity, wherever it was. Yes. And um, I still got a certificate somewhere. Oh. But I was a bank messenger at the time in the in uh, late sixties, yeah. so it must have been. Um, I was used to walking around the city all day, but I'd never walked that far that long. Oh, uh, I, I did. I did. Um, I did jog over a few bridges once when I was doing a little bit of jogging, but my mm. knees started giving way, so I had to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to jog, are you? That even the doctor tells you that jogging is not good for you. <laughs> I'm glad you did that nice pub on uh, Wednesday. I've, um, I've not been there for a few years. I tell you, the last time I went there and saw a show, Topping and Butch were on doing their show on a Boxing Day about what, in, eight, in the, eight years ago at the Queen's Head Theatre. The King's bar. Head, King's Head, King's Head Theatre Bar in Sorry. Islington. Yes. Oh, wow. Back. Well, it's yes. a lo lovely place, I think. And I remember seeing, um, I think David Dow did a show there, and Earl Grey, Earl Grey did a show. I think he did Boys in the Band, oh, Earl really? Grey. What a lovely people in there. Obviously, oh, I'm not sure they are. Obviously, I'm not in the theatre bit. And no. actually, while the show is on, we have to keep the noise down a little bit, you know, because right, yeah. obviously you've got the theatre behind there. But yeah. it is a lovely place. The only thing is the parking. It can be... Um... A bit of a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It can yeah. be a little bit... Um, bit My little friend bit... Jimmy used to have <coughs> the Ram Bar. Across, on the other, other side of the road, there was a Ram Bar. But Jimmy and the Bob used to have that pub. They've right. given it up now. But it's a listed building, so it still exists. But I, don't okay. know, I don't know what it is now, but they had the Ram Bar. Going back to about 20 years ago. There's a, there's a, a church opposite it, isn't there? Yes. I can't remember what it is. There's actually a church opposite the Yes, place. you can cut yeah. through the churchyard into the next street. That's right. Yeah. I used to cut yeah. through there, yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. It, and the church is like... Um... It's got the pillars at the front. I, it, what, I don't know what church that is, actually. No, it's a long time since I've been up there. But is I it? used to be up, up there quite a lot. You right. Hey-ho, well, I'll let you get on. All right, Ray, nice I've to talk a, to you, my friend. I shall see you on Monday. Will you be along Wednesday night for a little bit of a chat Wednesday night at 11? Well, um, I, I, I'd like to take part in the quiz, really, but unfortunately, you've got to have a team. And uh, it, Oh, no, it, no, no, it, there's no quiz this Wednesday. Oh. Uh, no, we're not every week. No. They're just trying it out at the moment. So the oh, next you mean one... ring up on Wednesday night? Yeah, Sorry. yeah, I'm here Wednesday night on the on a two-hour show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right. Take care, yeah, yeah, OK. Lovely to talk to you, Ray. Great Cheerio weekend. now. There we are, Ray calling in uh, from London. He's always got some wonderful stories to tell, as our Ray. Um, how's that with the... Um, with the... Um, uh, oh, what do you call it now? The The little caption. Is that any better now, Jason? Jason's helping me with a caption. We kind of moved it along a bit. And well, let's 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 move that back again. Okay, try that, Jason. See how that is now. I've made the font a little bit smaller because I, I can't. I don't have the Union Jack on here. I think YouTube put it on there. Uh, Wendy says it's worked, but it needs. Jason says it moves moves a bit. Uh, Shania says I like your shirt, Chris. Number is all good now, fully visible. Now, try that now. How's the number now? Is that fully visible now, please? Someone tell me. Anne says, I was going to call in quickly, but Ray got in first. I'm going shopping. I need, you need to hear my shopping wisdom. I tell you what, Anne, why not call in Wednesday night? We'll have two hours on Wednesday night and you can call in then, my darling. We would love you to... Um, uh, to, to call in about your shopping wisdom on Wednesday night. Jason said that's good now. OK. All right. Lovely. So we'll, we'll save that as that now. Uh, Wendy. Wendy, actually, I'd, I'd like to set that before it gets it gets sorted. <laughs> Wendy says you can have a fiddle with it now. What do you mean, Wendy? There's a lot of strange things that's been said here today. Fiddling and all this business. What are you all on? God's sake. So how's that number now? Does that number look all right now? Because I'll tell you why I want to do it now. Because when I finish, I can save it where it is. And it'll always come up in the same place then. Uh, Shania says there are some numbers missing again. How's it looking now? Can you have a look now? Do I need to be go along one more or what? What can you not see now? Please someone tell me. Well, stay on until we sort this out. Uh Yes. Is that better now? Someone tell me. I don't know what the delay's like on here today. We've got any more messages to do. Uh, Mike says, 
Hiya, Chris. Another great show. Please, 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 can you align your background pictures? What do you mean? They're all straight. Actually, I think it's the camera that's not aligned. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Just a second. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the camera that... Yeah. Yeah, it's the way the camera is. They're actually all straight along there. Um, but the camera's a little bit crooked. I'll try and sort that out for you next time. She can't see the number seven now. Oh, Shania. Hang on, let's move along a bit. Right, one minute. Is that enough, Shania? Right. Oh, yeah, she says that's all good. Right, so that's it. We're sorted. Okay. Final lot of messages. I think we're all done. Wendy says, can't see 7-7. Seven, seven. Can you see it now, Wendy? Let me know and then I can go. I need to go and pick, pick up my bike. Oh, I had my bike repaired. Do you remember I told you that uh, Halfords wanted 160, 170 quid to, to have the bike repaired? Well, I found someone that would do it for 120. It would have been 65, but the big cog on the front is a bit worn as well. So they suggested changing that again. Do I want it or not? So I said yes. So hopefully Ronnie is going to take me down to the bike shop in the car because it's a little bit of a distance, this one, in Crowthorne. And I'm going to pick up my bike all repaired. So I'm quite happy about that. Um, it's OK if not it covers in a bit. Oh, is it, can you still not see it? Wendy, what's... what's just a minute. We got we got me, me, Stacey Butler is trying to call in now. I can't take FaceTimes and do this at the same time. You still can't see it. Oh God. Hang on. One more. How's that? Come on, girls, sort me out here. If you're watching your recording of the show, I'm not going to bore you anymore. I'm going to say goodbye, OK, because you've seen this enough. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I'll see you uh, for a short video on Tuesday and Wednesday and a live uh, two-hour show on Wednesday from 11 o'clock, all right? Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye.